My wife's name is Alice, and even after giving birth to a pair of twins, she still maintains her charm. Our relationship has always been good, the only drawback being her mild sexual apathy. We only make love once a week. However, I don't mind, as I consider this a minor issue. It seems that Alice also understands that enduring such a life as a normal man is hard. So every month she would dress in the lacy slip dress and black stockings I love to completely satisfy me as a kind of compensation or reward. Tonight was the agreed upon day and I had been looking forward to it for days. I left work early, dropped the kids off at their grandparents, prepared her favorite meal and put a bunch of roses on the table while opening a bottle of red wine, waiting for her to come home at 6.30. Despite her usually being home by that time, today she was late. Just when I started to worry, I received a text from her. Honey, I have to work late today. I'll be home two hours later. I breathed a sigh of relief and started watching TV, regularly checking the news. At 8.15, Alice arrived right on time. As soon as she pushed open the door, I caught a faint scent of tobacco and red wine on her. Honey. Our boss bought some food for us today since we had worked so well overtime. I had some wine just now. Wait for me. I'll go take a shower, she said. While I was a bit puzzled, Alice took the initiative to explain. At the time, I didn't think much of it, assuming the smell of tobacco must have come from socializing with her colleagues at dinner. It was her last sentence that had me feeling extremely excited, instantly forgetting all my unease. Soon. Alice finished her shower, changed into black stockings and sexy lingerie, and appeared in front of me. Having had little physical intimacy with her for nearly half a month, I suddenly felt a wave of heat running through my whole body. I immediately pushed her onto the bed, tearing through the black stockings. Alice's uncontrollable moans only fueled my madness, and I released all the pent-up energy of the past few weeks. After exhausting ourselves for over two hours, Alice finally collapsed on the bed, completely drained. I had a cigarette, tidied up the mess, then embraced her as she fell asleep, already faintly anticipating the next encounter. The next day was the weekend, and Alice had to work overtime. I took the kids back home and bumped into their teacher, Diana, whose seat was conveniently next to mine in the movie theater. Diana is an elegant and beautiful lady widely recognized as the most beautiful woman in our neighborhood because she's the teacher to both children and we live in the same community we were already quite familiar with each other after watching the movie we chatted and she offered to help the kids with their homework at her house in the afternoon when i had something else to do after lunch i dropped jim and susan off at diana's place however it was not diana who opened the door but her husband david i was a bit surprised as David seldom appeared in our community, as I had only met him once before, he seemed a bit taken aback to see me, and I explained that I was dropping the kids off for Diana to help with their homework. He glanced at the kids and warmly invited me inside. I politely declined, explaining my busy schedule, and reminded the kids to listen to their teacher before going about my business. Since the kids had visited Diana's house many times before, I didn't have any concerns. Before dinner, Jim and Susan returned home right on time. Have you finished your homework? How was David? Is he good to you? I casually asked, feeling a little curious. We finished the homework a long time ago. David is really nice. He bought us a lot of delicious food and said we can come to play at their house often in the future. Jim happily replied, while Susan nodded in agreement. Then she whispered to me in a secretive manner. Jaji, guess what I found at David's house. What? I asked with a smile. Mommy's earring that she lost before. Susan triumphantly produced a delicate diamond earring. My smile froze as I recognized it as Alice's, because her name was engraved on it. This is the gift I bought for her on our wedding anniversary this year. At the time, the store clerk said that I could have the earrings engraved for a small fee, to prevent any inconvenience if they got lost and it would also have sentimental value. So, I had our names engraved separately on the two earrings. However, starting last week, Alice hasn't worn those earrings again. I noticed it and even asked her about it. She said she lost one of them, so she stopped wearing them. 
I didn't think much of it at the time. I just comforted her, telling her not to worry. Earrings are delicate and can get lost easily once taken off. So it's normal. I planned to get her something better next year. But now, looking at this earring in my hand, my heart inexplicably trembled. How could this earring end up lost at David's house? Susan, how did you find the earring? Tell daddy. My tone involuntarily turned serious. Seeing my serious expression, Susan hastily detailed the circumstances to me. Jaji, I found it under Uncle David's bed in the bedroom when we were playing hide and seek. I hid under the bed and saw it in the corner, so I secretly took it. With each word from Susan, my heart pounded harder. Bedroom, under the bed. How could Alice's earring end up in a place like that? Ridiculous thoughts I couldn't control began to well up in my mind. Alice, having an affair. The thought, uncontrollably surfacing, made me inexplicably agitated. Jaji, what's wrong? Aren't you happy to have found mommy's lost earring? Susan asked, seeing my grim expression, hearing Susan's words. I barely forced down my various thoughts, asking her and Jim to quickly finish their dinner and go back to their rooms. Then I sat alone in the living room, staring blankly at the earring. On the one hand, my emotions told me that Alice should not be having an affair. After all, she is sexually apathetic, rarely initiating intimacy unless I ask for it. Maybe Alice accidentally lost the earring at Diana's house when she took the kids there as guests. But on the other hand, reason reminded me that things don't just happen coincidentally. Two conflicting thoughts waged a battle in my mind, making me deeply troubled. I love Alice. Otherwise, I wouldn't have put up with her sexual apathy for so many years. I had never imagined that my wife having an affair would happen to me. If a sexually apathetic woman can have an affair, then what a failure and how ridiculous a husband am I. I meticulously recalled every time I had intimacy with Alice. I can guarantee I absolutely satisfied her. On this point, I have absolute confidence. But the earring in front of me forced me to prepare for the worst. I called Susan and Jim and reminded them not to tell mom about finding the earring. Dad, why shouldn't we tell mom? Jim and Susan were really puzzled. I squeezed out a smile and reluctantly said, This is a little secret between dad and you. Okay, dad wants to give mom a surprise. Tell mom about it later after the surprise is revealed. Okay, this is a secret between us and dad. Jim and Susan, after all, were still children, and I easily fooled them with a reason. Then, I began to think, although this earring forced me to prepare for the worst, it still couldn't prove that Alice was having an affair. So I needed to find evidence, evidence that could prove whether she was having an affair or not. Worried that we might have a fight affecting the kids, I sent both of them to my parents' place. Honey, I'm back. I was so busy today. I'm really tired. I won't have dinner. I'm going to bed. As it wasn't long after I got home, Alice came back, looking exhausted. She went straight into the bedroom and fell asleep, feigning nonchalance. I entered the room and, seeing Alice looking so tired, I came up with a plan. Wife, the company gave out a big bonus today. We should celebrate. With that, I opened a bottle of red wine. Let's celebrate tomorrow. I can barely keep my eyes open. You must be really tired today. Have a bit of wine to relax. It'll help you sleep. Unable to resist my persuasion. In the end, I coaxed Alice into drinking two large glasses of wine before she went to sleep. After she had fallen asleep soundly, I made sure of it and then picked up her phone, lightly pressing her finger to unlock it with the fingerprint and opened her chat history. Before this, I'd have trust. I had never checked her phone all these years. But today, I had to resort to this strategy. At the same time, I was prepared to apologize if it turned out that I had misunderstood Alice because I was overthinking. However, this feeling of guilt quickly disappeared. Initially, all of her chat records seemed normal without any problems. The contact list also didn't have any suspicious people. Just when I thought that I was being paranoid and was planning to exit her social account, I discovered that she had another social account. Moreover, it was encrypted and needed to be unlocked again to access the software. My heart immediately tensed up, 
even though many people have two accounts, one for work and one for personal. Alice is not the type to bother with such things. She has always only used this one account. This encrypted account gave me a very bad feeling. I once again used her fingerprint to unlock and enter this account. Inside this account, there was only one contact with the note David. And there were two unread messages. Reading those messages, my head started to buzz instantly. Just now, that honest guy took the kids back. It's been eight years. And he still thinks you are sexually apathetic. Ha <laughs> ha. Darling, it's been a few days and I miss you. How about we have a wild night tomorrow? These two messages instantly darkened my vision. At this moment, there was no need to prove anything further. These two messages were enough to prove that Alice was having an affair. And the person she was having an affair with turned out to be Diana's husband, David. I felt a bit overwhelmed at that moment. Because judging from these two messages, David was probably someone Alice knew even before we got married, and they might have been together, and Alice isn't sexually apathetic. For me, this fact was no less than a bolt from the blue. I turned back to look at Alice, who was sound asleep. I really wanted to wake her up immediately and ask her. Even my hands were trembling, and I had thoughts of strangling her in my mind. But in the end, I restrained myself. I began to think calmly, since Alice isn't sexually apathetic, but pretends to be in front of me, there's only one possibility, she doesn't actually love me. It's been a full eight years. This means that during these eight years, she's been having an affair behind my back, and I was completely clueless all this time. What made me even more distraught was the fact that, during these eight years, she didn't change in any way. As I looked at the face of Alice, which I adore so much at ordinary times, I really wished to strangle her right now. In my mind, I couldn't help but visualize Alice being played with by David, especially when she was with him. They must have been laughing at me, even when we were so close. I hadn't realized their dalliance. I felt like going crazy. I really wanted to kill Alice and David. But in the end, reason prevailed. It's a civilized society now, and I can't commit a crime. I still have two lovely children. I can't tread the path of illegal activities for a shameless woman. It's not worth it. Although it was very painful, I knew that divorcing her now was the right choice. She can endure living with an unfeeling person for eight years, but I can't. I marked those two messages as unread again, closed the social app, and checked if there were any other secrets in her phone. She seemed to be cautious, and didn't leave any secrets in her phone. However, in her phone's browser, I found a search history about how to get all the property when divorcing, and conditions for receiving accidental insurance money, and how to successfully stage an accident. You be asterisk 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 asterisk. I wanted to slap Alice across her face, and tear her face apart. During all these years, I have been meticulous and loved her to the bone, and in return, I got nothing but heartlessness and betrayal. But in the end, I slowly withdrew my hand. It's not the time to confront her. If I tear up the relationship and divorce her, she'd get half of the property. This house was put down by my parents, and I'm still paying off the mortgage. As a programmer who worked hard for years, I earned quite a lot of money. But it's all been handed over to this shameless woman to manage. I have to find a way to get this money back and ensure that she leaves with nothing. After checking her phone, I took pictures of all the records and evidence and then put the phone back in her bag. If you betray me, don't expect me to remember our marital bond. I ripped off Alice's anywhere, stimulated by those chat records. I pounced on her. George, have you gone crazy? What are you doing? Alice, who was sleeping, was startled awake and saw me tearing off her underwear, behaving aggressively. She scolded loudly. E, I'm in a good mood today, and I want to have some fun with you. I laughed and pounced on her. I'm tired. Today is not the agreed date. Leave me alone. Alice tried to push me away. Agreed date. When I heard this, I was furious. She was frequently meeting other people, yet I... Her legitimate husband had to count the days to be with her. How ridiculous and ironic. She's not frigid. 
she's just frigid towards me. I shouted at her for the first time, with a stern face, do I, as your husband, have to schedule our intimate moments with you? Alice seemed a little frightened by me, and suddenly lowered her voice, saying, I'm really tired today, can we do it tomorrow? No, tonight, right now, I can't wait for a minute. George, you are really crazy. Do you know that even if we are married, if I don't want to, I can still accuse you of rape? Alice seemed annoyed and kept shouting. I completely ignored her and vented my frustrations. Finally, when I was done, I walked out of the room. George, you wait for me. I'll accuse you of rape tomorrow. Alice angrily cursed. Whatever. I changed my usual weak attitude and lit a cigarette on the balcony. The night passed in silence, and early the next morning, Alice left home, either going to work or to really accuse me, but I wasn't worried. After a quick breakfast, I went to the bank to report the lost cards and transfer all the money to my parents. However, the total amount in the bank cards was less than a hundred yuan. Clearly, Alice had already transferred the money out. Suddenly, my mother called me, saying Jim had a high fever and needed immediate blood transfusion due to a rare acute illness. They needed to find a donor with the same blood type. I quickly drove to the hospital. After asking about the situation, I finally breathed a sigh of relief. Jim just had mild anemia and could be cured, not a terminal illness. My parents and I were relieved and thanked God. I went to get my blood drawn, but the doctor soon told me that my blood type did not match Jim's at all. I was stunned for a moment mismatched. How is that possible? Have you made a mistake? I asked subconsciously. The doctor shook his head and said, the test results cannot be wrong. How could a father not know that he and his child have completely different blood types? My mind was suddenly like an explosion, and I remembered the message David sent to my wife yesterday, which included the phrase, honest man. Could it be that the reason Alice married me so quickly was because she was already pregnant? She needed an honest man to step in. I couldn't sit still. I pulled out a few hairs from the two children's heads and went for a paternity test. I didn't want to worry my parents. I asked them to take care of Jim and left. I found a qualified private testing agency online and drove there immediately. Although the hospital could also do the paternity test. The results took too long, several days, and I couldn't wait. Although the private agency was expensive, I paid several times the normal price with my credit card, demanding results in three hours. For those three hours, I was on pins and needles. At 11.30 a.m., I received two copies of the test reports. When I saw the results, I felt like I had been struck by lightning. Jim and Susan were not my biological children. My head sank and I almost fainted. I couldn't accept the reality, but the test results in my hand forced me to face it. I sat in the chair for a long time, calming down my emotions. I really wanted to confront Alice immediately or beat her up, but my rational side told me that approaching her would only make things worse for me. The best punishment for her was to get my money back and make her leave with nothing. Coming out of the paternity testing center, I opened the children's class group and messaged Diana to confirm that she didn't have classes today and was resting at home. After that, I drove back to the community. I planned to tell her about her husband's two illegitimate children and then ask her for help in finding hair from David. I also intended to conduct a paternity test between Jim, Susan, and David. Once it was proven that David was the father of both children, it would serve as evidence of Alice's infidelity. I would then be able to make her leave with nothing and even claim for back child support in court for all these years. I believed Diana was also eager to know whether these were her husband's illegitimate children. On the way, I bought a recording pen just in case. Back in the community, I went straight to Diana's house. Diana opened the door, seeming to have been doing yoga. She was wearing tight yoga clothes and a yoga mat was spread in the living room. Her curvaceous figure made me uncomfortable. I had to admit that in terms of both figure and appearance, Diana surpassed Alice. I couldn't understand why David was going after my wife when he had such a beautiful wife. What's the matter with you? Diana asked, noticing my strange gaze, her face slightly blushing. 
I have something to show you. I cut to the chase, pulling out my phone and showing her the conversation between David and my wife that I had captured last night. Unexpectedly, Diana reacted just slightly uncomfortable after looking at the pictures and didn't show any fury or excitement. I knew they were having an affair a long time ago. I actually wanted to tell you yesterday, but I was worried you wouldn't believe me. So I held back. Turned out, the encounter at the movies yesterday wasn't a coincidence, but intentionally orchestrated by her. Actually, I wanted to ask you for a favor yesterday. What favor? To be honest with you, David and I had already started sleeping in separate rooms. The reason I haven't divorced him yet is that I don't want to let that jerk off the hook easily. I want to make him leave with nothing and shatter his reputation. This was the first time I had seen Diana so angry. How can I help you? Helping David face consequences was exactly what I wanted. Wait here. Diana went into the bedroom and took out a laptop. I heard you are good with computers. I want you to help me crack the startup password on this laptop. This is the laptop David always carries around. I secretly hid it when he came home drunk the day before yesterday. He treasures this laptop like his life and never lets me touch it. There must be some secrets inside. Besides, he has a habit of recording videos. Whenever he takes medicine, he records a video and then admires his macho appearance. Diana placed the laptop in front of me. How could a minor issue like this stump a programmer like me? I pressed the power button, and after a series of swift operations, the laptop was unlocked. Diana couldn't wait and sat next to me eagerly. The desktop was clean, just full of applications, with no documents or anything. I checked each hard drive and finally found a document named Baby in the D drive. Opening it, it was filled with videos. I randomly opened one, and soon there came the sound of passionate moaning, and the actress in the video was none other than Diana, who was sitting beside me. Quick, close it. Diana blushed and hastily snatched the mouse from my hand, frantically closing the video. David recorded this when we first got married and never deleted it. Diana explained, angry and embarrassed. I didn't know what to say and continued to browse the videos. After watching them, I was furious at Diana and myself for being fooled. It turned out that not only did David have an affair with my wife, but he had also slept with several women including David's female colleagues, Diana's cousin, and her best friend. And my wife was no better. She was involved in numerous illicit activities with David. Watching the videos of Alice being tormented, I was shaking with anger. However, this was just the beginning. What made me even angrier was yet to come. After watching the video, I opened another encrypted file and found a massive electronic version of an accidental insurance policy that Alice had bought for me, with her listed as the beneficiary. Remembering that Alice had previously searched online for conditions for claiming accidental insurance benefits and how to successfully stage an accident, a shiver ran down my spine. She was my wife of eight years. I never would have imagined that, aside from the affair, she had been planning to stage an accident to collect the insurance money. Diana looked at the policy and then at me, seeming to understand what was going on. She took my hand and tried to comfort me, but my mind was buzzing and I couldn't make out a single word. It wasn't until Diana made a call to report the situation that I snapped out of my stupor. I quickly sent the information from the computer to my email and made a copy just in case. Then, I said to Diana, Call him back before sending him to prison. I want him to do me a favor. I had over 400,000 in savings on Alice's card, and I had to find a way to get it back. To my surprise, Diana trusted me and didn't ask what favor I wanted. She immediately took a picture of the computer's startup interface and sent it to David's WeChat. He's on his way back from work. How much time do you need? Seeing Diana's alluring figure. I suddenly felt a desire for revenge against David. If no delays, half an hour, your husband is cheating. Do you want to get back at him before divorcing, to drive him half to death? Do you want? Diana's beautiful eyes blinked, and then she seemed to understand something. Blushing, she softly murmured a, uh, yes. Seeing her agreement, I suddenly embraced her and rolled onto the yoga mat. Initially bewildered. Diana eventually took the lead and embraced me. 
Half an hour later, after the emotional release, I finally felt calm. When our eyes met, I was surprised to see a hint of tenderness and satisfaction in Diana's eyes. As soon as the storm passed, David returned. In his presence, I kissed Diana firmly and then got dressed calmly. Clearly not expecting this scene, he was at a loss for words and began hurling profanities, threatening to take me to the police station and even grabbing a chair to throw at me. However, before he could throw the chair, I kicked and knocked him to the ground. He was completely depleted, lacking the strength to resist. Finally, I picked up the computer and played an unbearable video in front of him. In addition to him and Alice, the video also featured his boss and the boss who supplied goods to their company. Seeing the video, David immediately panicked, sweat beading on his forehead. You know who these two men are already, right? If you don't want to go to jail, you better listen to me. I pointed to the video and began to threaten him directly. I was wrong to sleep with your wife, but you slept with mine, so we are even. If you feel like you are at a loss, you can continue sleeping with my wife. I promise I won't say anything. If we bring these family scandals into the public eye, we both will lose face. It's better to solve it privately. What do you think? David originally indignant, suddenly put on a smile and became very polite. It was no wonder, as a leader in the government, no one wanted to lose their power, let alone go to jail. I'll immediately call Alice, and have her return the 40,000 that she took from me over the years. I didn't bother with small talk, and quickly got to the point. Diana had already made a call to the prosecutor and the police would soon be coming to extract evidence from the computer. He could be arrested at any moment, and once he found out he's been reported, he definitely wouldn't cooperate anymore. Okay, I'll help you get the money back, but you have to return the computer to me. David pulled out his phone, flipping through the numbers, bargaining with me. Suddenly, he seemed to remember something, was about to dial a number, and then stopped. Right, have her transfer the money to which card? If it's transferred to your card, she will definitely suspect something. How about having her transfer it to my card, and then I'll transfer it to you. Have her transfer directly to Diana's card. I had Diana bring a bank card, and handed it directly to him. Okay. David looked at Diana with a complex gaze, then at me, and reluctantly complied. It seemed that his relationship with Alice was indeed out of the ordinary. He had only mentioned inside information on stocks, doubling in a few days, and Alice obediently transferred all her money over without a shred of suspicion. After effortlessly obtaining the money, I opened the massive electronic insurance policy and secretly switched on the recording pen. Both of you are really sinister, planning to kill me for insurance money. This has nothing to do with me. It was Alice's idea to kill you for insurance money. She was afraid you would find the policy so she handed it over to me to keep for her. I told her that the risk of killing her husband for insurance money was too high, but she wouldn't listen. She even mentioned knowing a drug addict. David quickly distanced himself and divulged Alice's entire plan. As it turned out, Alice knew a drug addict who planned to go to northern Myanmar. Before he left, Alice wanted to stage an accidental death for me. Once the drug addict was in Myanmar, she could vanish without a trace, and she would receive a huge insurance payout. As we were discussing this, there was a knock at the door. Diana opened it, and the person revealed himself to be a prosecutor's representative. You two dared to deceive me. I'll kill you both. Upon realizing that he had been betrayed by his own wife, David's shock was palpable. He first looked surprised, then lunged at Diana like a mad dog. However, with me present, he couldn't harm her and was soon taken away by the prosecutor, leaving Diana's house. I printed several copies of a divorce agreement, sat in the living room, and waited for Alice to return from work. She seemed unaware of David's arrest when she arrived home and still didn't show me any kindness. I couldn't be bothered to be hypocritical with her and directly presented her with two divorce agreements. Sign the divorce agreement and pack your things to leave right away. George, what do you mean? Alice looked at me incredulously, seemingly not expecting me, who normally obeyed her every command, to suggest divorce. 
stop the nonsense and sign the papers. Then go reunite with David. I don't want to spend another moment with you. You filthy woman. What are you talking about? Are you suspecting me of infidelity? I can't believe that you, such an honest person, would entertain baseless suspicions of my infidelity. It's simply unreasonable. She showed no intention of admitting anything, and instead blamed me for misunderstanding her. Alice, at this point, do you still want to continue pretending? Don't think I don't know what you've been up to all these years. George, I don't know what's gotten into you. If you don't trust me, then let's get divorced, but don't regret it later. Alice picked up the pen, apparently preparing to sign. I scoffed and watched her. She still seemed confident, apparently believing that I had loved her to the core all these years, and didn't have the courage to leave her. Suddenly, she seemed to understand the divorce terms, and angrily threw the pen away. Well, George, I didn't expect all these years for you to have been pretending. You used to say you loved me so much, and now you want to leave me with nothing. I won't leave without anything. Is that so? I brought out a paternity test report and played the video of the four-person activity, putting it in front of her. Are these pieces of evidence enough for you to leave with nothing? Where did you get this video from? Alice, who was just moments ago on a high horse, suddenly looked dumbfounded. Her gaze became frantic, and she clutched my arm, teary-eyed, and began to plead. Back then, I was deceived by David, so I didn't terminate the two pregnancies. But all these years have passed and I have developed feelings. If we must get a divorce, can we wait until after the children's birthday? I'm begging you. Do you want to delay a few more days and have the drug addict create an accidental death for me so you can claim the insurance money? Honestly, David has already told me everything. It was also me who told David to deceive you into transferring the 40,000 this afternoon. I directly exposed all her secrets. You, you know everything. Alice looked at me in a panic. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I'll definitely change in the future. Can you forgive me? It was all David's idea. I was confused for a moment and listened to him. For the sake of our many years of marriage, can you give me another chance? As Alice spoke, she lowered her head and started undoing my pants, teary-eyed, with the intention of sweet-talking me and trying to change my mind. Sign the papers and get out right now. I pushed her away, speaking with a determined tone, leaving no room for negotiation. The hands unbuttoning my pants immediately stopped, and her face turned extremely ugly. Soon, she turned into a raging mother tiger, roaring frantically. You heartless creature, after all these years, even if the children are not yours, they've called you dad for so long. Don't you have any feelings? Are you so ruthless? Do you have to be so extreme about this? Does it matter if they are biologically related? They've been calling you dad. What else do you want? After letting you sleep for so many years, you won't leave me with nothing. Alice gave up her pretense and started to act shamelessly. I wanted to leave you some dignity, but I didn't expect you to be so shameless. I didn't bother to be polite and simply left the house. Then, I sent the video of her affair to a few relatives group chats at her family's place. The groups erupted in an instant. I didn't bother to read more, exited the group chats, and took the evidence straight to the police station. Soon, Alice was taken to the police station, and with undeniable evidence, she had no choice but to admit her crime, and even implicated David as her accomplice. It turned out that they were lovers, and when Alice got pregnant, David forced her to marry me. I was a safe and convenient choice for them to continue their affair. The plot of killing for insurance money was claimed to be the other's idea by both parties. And in the end, they were both charged as accomplices. Awaiting them was the severe punishment of the law. It's worth noting that through Alice's confession, the police also managed to arrest a drug trafficking gang. Diana and I both filed for divorce, and the lawsuits went smoothly. In the end, the court ruled that David and Alice leave with nothing, and Diana and I each got our respective family's assets. After the divorce, I married Diana, and a year later, we had our own child. From then on, our family lived in harmony and we finally began our happy life.